morning, Antioch. It is another blessed Sunday. We are here at Sunday School. Today's lesson, Seeking Meaning. Our devotional reading comes from Proverbs, the second chapter, verses 12 through 22. Our background scripture is Genesis 39 and Proverbs chapter 2. And our printed passage is Proverbs, the second chapter, the first through the eleventh verse. Amen? Amen. Would anybody like to start us off with a word of prayer? That's right. Heaven. Father, thank you for letting us wake up this beautiful day. You have given us, given us us, Lord, as we go through the day. Let us, let your Holy Spirit guide us and teach us through your word. Lord, I really love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we start our lesson today, Solomon is continuing to talk to his son in regards to wisdom, and we going to see what Solomon had to say. Amen? Amen. Anybody want to read the printed passage? My son, if you accept my words and store up my <coughs> commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. <clears throat> for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you, and understanding will guard you. Amen. 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 As we start out in verse 1, it says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you. Solomon is speaking to his son again, or should I say continuing his conversation, because remember from chapter 1, he started off talking to him. Mm -hmm. um, and he is trying to teach him ways of the Lord, because he is instructing him in the ways of the Lord. And all wisdom comes from the Lord. Amen. This is something we all should strive to get. And you can get wisdom from anybody. You may say, well, they're doing wrong, but they can give you wisdom. Because if somebody tells you not to do drugs because you'll go to jail and they're in jail, that's wisdom. You can use it just if you're going to apply it. Just if you're going to apply it. But he's giving his son this information. And Solomon is giving his blessing from the Lord, because wisdom is a blessing from the Lord, and he shared it with his son. And in order for Rehoboam, and that's the son he's talking to, that's the only one I know that they mention in the Bible, to receive the wisdom, he has to accept them, and then treat them as a special gift, or a treasure, and store them. And they are stored within you. This wisdom is in you. It's in your heart. It's not something on the surface that you push to the side. It's, it's either in you or it's not in you, because it's going to have to come out of you sometimes. Um, God wants us to take, make his wisdom our wisdom, because everything that he gives us is to be shared. This wisdom is also to be shared. We take it in and we share it with others, as he has shared it with us. This means that although we may share the word with one another, we also have to have a personal Seeking of the Lord's wisdom. You have to seek out the Lord's wisdom. You have to do it yourself. We can't just drop information and knowledge on you. You have to go get some yourself. You have to know what his word is saying. Mm -hmm. This verse also speaks to the wisdom of not only acting on the treasures of wisdom from the Bible. As in when reading it. But it must be engrafted in your heart. You have to have it in you. It cannot come out of you if it ain't in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to read Proverbs 3 and 3? Let love and faithfulness. 
bracelets never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Yeah, keep them in your heart. You notice it says the tablet of your heart. You have to have this in you. And if you looked at um, Genesis 39 when it speaks to Joseph's wisdom in dealing with Potiphar's wife, y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Make a long story short, he was accused. He was assaulted by the woman, but he didn't do anything. And it looked bad because when Potiphar got back, he said, you're going to jail. You done done this to my wife. But it may have looked bad, but Joseph stayed faithful in his wisdom from the Lord and didn't touch the woman. And then when he was locked up, uh-oh, the Lord still found favor and protected him and kept him. And then you know what happened later on. So in his wisdom of knowing that he was left with everything that his earthly master had left him, he was respectful. But he was respectful to his master, master, the Lord. And he kept, he kept his wisdom about him. And as you know, he got blessed later on. So in verse 2 it says, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Solomon states that we must turn our ear to wisdom. Uh oh. So that means you gotta seek it. It ain't just gonna be sitting on your lap. You gotta seek it out. You gotta go find it. And listen to it. You gotta hear it. But then he says, you gotta do some other things. But while you're doing this, this work means getting off your butt. You're going to have to do some things because you have a responsibility to this wisdom. You can't just say, I come to church and I got wisdom. You can't say, I just hang out with all these people who read the Bible and I got wisdom. you got to do some work yourself because you can be lost thinking you know something that you haven't tried to find out for yourself. Wisdom comes from you seeking it out personally. This is a personal relationship, personal knowledge of the Lord. And it tells us, and we said this last week about 2 Timothy, study. We study. Not, not just you study and then you give it to me. I got to study too because you can give me something you ain't supposed to give me. And I wouldn't know. Well, the, uh, that's the, the purpose in, in studying too. And that's why it's saying, you know, apply your heart to understanding because to get the wisdom, to gain it, you have to study it to understand it, to be able to apply it. To yes. It. Mm -hmm. So this is all about us having an application of God's word. We don't just get the word and do nothing with it. We're going to have to apply it in the future. You also have to apply it to your heart. Now, the heart's job is to seek the understanding of the wisdom, and it speaks again to effort. It speaks to your effort. And the different uses of the instruments for the entire body to receive. The ear is not, and I repeat, the ear is not the only instrument that should be taking in wisdom. It is not the only instrument. You can hear it. You can see it. You can speak it. Hey, sometimes just your facial expression can take in a difference between anger right away and discretion and knowing how to adjust your facial expression to a situation. Mm -hmm. Your ear is not the only one because you know that we got our expressions in whatever we do. Oh, Woo. you know how we get. We, we can do some nonverbal expressions too. So we have to understand we have to use all instruments in this situation. Our ears are not the only one that get utilized. But I was just going to add, because um, I keep thinking of James 1 and 21 or 1 and 22, where it says, be, don't be only hearers of the word. you got to be doers. That's that wisdom again. So. Yep. Amen. So in verse 3 it says, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, once again, this is effort. And we're going to talk about this later. This is a verse where Solomon starts speaking to the, the desire and the ways to seek wisdom. Seek it in prayer when you call out loud. If you call to the Lord, praise him, thank him, and then you ask for increase in you. And it ain't in material. It's in his word. Help me be a better person. Help me be more understanding. 
Help me be patient. Lord, work on my lack of kindness. That's wisdom because you're knowing who you go to to get it. See, when you go to the Lord, you say, Lord, I got this. I got that. I ain't, I'm good. I'm good. Your prayer is wrong in the first place, so that's lack of. You, you go to the Lord. He's the only one that can give you this. He'll put a vessel in front of you, but you still have to go to him and ask for it. You have to go to him. So you don't get to just say, nah, somebody going to give it to me because it don't come from you. And his word tells us you have not because you, you ask, ask not. not. That's right. Amen. Yeah. So you have to go to him. Anybody want to read on James 1 and 5? If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Hold on a second. Say that again. <laughs> if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Uh-oh, so if you need it, you ask him, he'll give it to you. And how will he give it to you? Generously. And guess what? Without finding fault. Oh, and he'll give it to you. So we know who to go to. He tells you, come to me, and I'll give it to you. But it doesn't tell me, hey, Jeffrey, send your mother over there to get it for you, and she'll bring it back to you. No, he might share some with her, but I still got to go myself to get it. You have to get it yourself. Well, it's like when you were talking about, you have to have that desire. That's that a desire. To, to yeah. want to do better, to want to be better, and we need God to do that. Yes, and Solomon's telling his son these things. He said, I'm showing you, and we'll, we'll go through some of the other verses. I'm showing you some of the attributes you need for this wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I know you see me, your father, in front of you, giving you this wisdom and sharing this with you, but it has been given to me. And guess what? I seeked it out myself. I asked for it. I spoke to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And now, son, I'm going to tell you some of the attributes of what you have to do to get it yourself. So he's loving on his son in a major way. So... He gave this to us when we needed a Messiah, because man didn't even understand the law. How to truly worship the Lord, we was confused with that, because don't forget, we started making our own images. Mm. How to repent or how to live. The law, the law was holy. Sin was before the law. We were sinning before the law came, and all the law did was expose us even more to sin. But it was not bad. It was us. It was us. Sin was here before the law was here. We were not turning an ear. We were not taking in our hearts or truly calling out in prayer. You remember when we were um, doing the burnt offerings, we wouldn't even clean the animal out like the Lord told us to. We were taking it into the temple unclean. So even after he told us what to do, Turned our ear another way. But the Lord is always good. And he sent wisdom in many ways. But the one that we truly needed to see, he sent him also. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to read 1 Corinthians 1 and 30? It is because of him <clears throat> that you are in Christ Jesus, who has, be who has become for us wisdom from God. Uh -oh. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Oh, you mean Christ is the wisdom from the Lord? Yes. You mean to tell me he left the Gospels here for us to read? You mean to tell me he showed you how to do the acts of mercy and grace and kindness and love and compassion? You mean to tell me he didn't just get angry and blow up at people? He didn't look down on people? He didn't have a problem with your skin color, what you had, what cure you didn't have? Oh, he talked to lepers? Oh, he healed the man who thought the pool of water was the healing? And he said, look at me because I'm the one that's doing it for you? <laughs> so his wisdom was here mm -hmm. and he left a message for you he left his word for you and you get the wisdom in his word and when you're seeking his word you're seeking God and you call upon God to get that understanding of the word and Christ was his wisdom he was crucified in God's power and wisdom so that we may have more power and wisdom you need to call on the Lord for understanding of the Gospels and the gifts that come through them and his every word. Think about one of your favorite verses you got out there and you use all the time. 
and think about how it affects how you use it. Mm -hmm. You'll say, one of mine, be kind, one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. There are some times I'd be ready to blow up. And I got to back up and say, hold up. <laughs> the word. <laughs> the word said this. And remember, somebody did this for you. Yes. So Amen. Amen. if you know that that blessing is supposed to be extended, have some discretion. Have some discretion and wait. Give it to the God that you know can handle it. And then let him give it back to you so you can handle it. You, you got to call on him. Don't just read, but seek meaning of the treasures that he has placed in his word and put it in your heart. It has to be in your heart. Mm -hmm. If it ain't in your heart, it ain't in you. It got to be in your heart. Anybody want to read Proverbs 8 14? Violence ain't going to make it better. 
we got to show kindness. We got to be lights in this world to show love, kindness. We know it's unjust. We know they ain't doing right. We know things are bad. But God says, my people will show, be known by their love. So we got to show love. We don't get to show all this hatred and anger and all these crazy things. We got to be loving. And it's hard. Yes. Because your body, <laughs> right now, it'd be one to say, uh uh. I want to do this my way. I need to get this out of me. Mm -hmm. But we, that's when we call on them first. Yeah, and, and, and you mentioned about the situation that we're all dealing with right now. <clears throat> Exercising wisdom, the word tells us to lean not into our own yes. understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him. Even in this situation that we're in, we seek the, the wisdom of God. And how do we deal with this, Lord? Don't try to figure it out or feel that we have the answer to this. Because these are some complex uh, uh, this is a complex uh, thing we're dealing with. We have been dealing with it for many of years, yes. and we haven't resolved it. We haven't solved it. So therefore, we should be seeking God's counsel on this here. How do we deal with this unjust? How do we deal with this uh, uh, pol police brutality? Our ways, or some of our ways, we're thinking, as you just stated, we're going to go uh, against it the way they're coming at us, mm -hmm. you know, with force, with violence, with, you know, uh, um, corrupt ways. Yep. But God is saying no. You be wise. be wise. Seek me for the wisdom. I'll show you how to get through this. Yeah. I'll give you the answers. The Lord tells you, chill. That's what discretion is. Chill. I got this. I got this. Mm -hmm. Let me show your heart the right way. We watched uh, the looting down at, I think it was Walmart yesterday down in Florida where the 200 people ran in the store and got what they wanted and left out the store. They tried to find them. I think it was the Walmart. But that's not what we do. That's not what we do. We love. Now, we can talk peace, we can be about peace, and we should do all just things unto God. Man, man wicked. We know that. But we can't be wicked if we try to be like Christ. He was never wicked. He was loving. He had some compassion. He definitely had a whole lot of patience. So if he's doing that, we got to act. And, and it hurts. Amen. It's hard. But I said sometimes you're going to suffer because that's when you get to apply it. You, you don't get to walk through it. You think Jesus was on the cross and getting beat before the cross and said, Father, I pray for them. Hey, where do you think his mom was at? He's love. He still didn't go. He knew it was not for him to go against that. Even when he was getting ready, they were getting ready to send the people back after they were hungry. Compassion. He stopped. He said, no, you feed them. Mm -hmm. He never wanted you to see anything but true love of one another. That's why the second greatest commandment is that. And he showed it. And we have to do the same thing in trying times. And we going through things like Jesus went through things. I just thank God I ain't got beat like he did. Before he even got on the cross. See, you don't stick something in somebody's side and you say, oh, that's okay, let me pull that out. You don't come back and let them see so your, your faithful ones that even believe more that, hey, you can see these wounds touch them. We, we, have, to, we have to experience some of these things to apply it. And it, it, it hurts. Sometimes you have to know it to share it. Uh oh, sometimes we have to share this. Sometimes you have to experience and see someone else walking through it. And most importantly, you have to call on the Lord in all of these instances so that you can, can continue to receive his wisdom. You know, you never heard Jesus, them say Jesus didn't call on the Father. He called them. So we should be saying, call on the Father. And you know, we get in ourselves, we man, we woman, we boy, we girl. We get on ourselves and we don't call on them right away. That's that discretion part that we're going to come up to in a little bit. The wisdom is, of God is not an easy road and it's not an easy read over. And you get it and sometimes you have to put down the world and truly seek out the understanding of the wisdom. And uh, putting down the world is hard. The world we fight, the world is a heavyweight boxer. And... <laughs> When we try to go fight it by ourselves, we get knocked out. Not out. <laughs> it ain't even a fight. It don't take much. But when we go 
over it with the